In the perfect society of one state, life is conducted according to the principles of rationality. Descent is punishable by death. D-503 is the chief engineer of the spaceship Integral, but he's fallen in love with I-330, who's part of an underground revolutionary movement determined to destroy the state. Ten days to the maiden flight of the spacecraft Integral. Ten days labor in which a man, for example the engineer D-503, myself, might hope for the restoration of his reason after a period of uncertainty. I see my hands at work with pencil and calculator. I hear my voice instructing the second engineer and answering a thousand questions from as many official sources. I descend to the bowels of the engines, then stare down from the cockpit on the city. All will be ready. All perfect. All to serve the greater glory of one state and transmit our perfect wisdom to the furthest stars. All is in order. Reason is supreme. And in the evenings, just now and again, I find myself making love to I-330, the deadliest foe of the state, who would destroy it as carelessly as she consumes my eager passion and dismantles the reason that gives me purpose. I am lost. But this is one state. A moment, uh, Comrade Engineer D-503. Yes, Comrade Concierge. Correspondence has arrived addressed to you. Many thanks. It is of an irregular nature. I see. I must tell you, I've used my discretion in this matter. Discretion? Vis-a-vis -vis the guardians. For your sake, Comrade Engineer. Then I must thank you, Comrade Concierge, although I do not understand. <sighs> so am I to receive this item of correspondence? You poor thing. I beg your pardon? I notice things, you know. I would think so, yes. I notice you. I am one among many. I am one of us, unworthy of such scrutiny. I sense your weariness and solitude, my dear. I'm older than you. Please do not worry on my account. Your analysis is mistaken. You need a helping hand. One day you will be old. Perhaps I should accompany you there, along the road of life. Comrade, you... I my dear... Consider, please, what is appropriate to our daily intercourse. I shall, my dear. I'll give it careful thought. You will? And when I've thought it through, I will decide if I have strength for such... for such a sacrifice as would be necessitated. For what? A sacrifice? To give myself. One should not do so lightly at my time of life. No, of, of course. So I will it, let you know what I decide. It, good night, then, uh, comrade, you. One moment. What is it? You're forgetting your letter. I'm sorry? You see what I mean? You need looking after, Comrade Engineer, or else where will you be? Forgetting a letter from Comrade O? You must know that for me there can never be a minute, or an hour, or a day in springtime without you. You saw me with R, but he's nothing to me. Just an appointment I made to make you jealous, and that didn't work either. You don't care. Because I love you, I must take a few more days to try to assemble the wreckage of myself into something resembling a former O90. You remember her, of course. And then I shall go and fill in the relevant form myself in order to show that I am withdrawing my registration from you. Clear the blast apron. All workers, clear blast apron. Test firing in 30 seconds. Are they all out from under there? Should be. Check equilibrium. Within standard variation? I want it equal, comrade. So do we all, comrade. Then make it happen. Hold off firing. Cutting it short. Maintenance team to blast apron. Away to order. 15 seconds to firing. Override the command. I did. 10 seconds. Do it again. 
It's locked. It can't be locked. Who's locked it? Override. Nothing. The maintenance crew are in there. Get them out. Five seconds. The tannoy's closed. I can't understand it. No. Firing now. <laughs> Get a medical team in there. But there'll be nothing left, not even ashes. Obey the command. Let us follow the procedures. Ambulance to the blast apron now. Congratulations, comrades, on a wholly successful test of the engines of the Integral. Console yourselves for the accident which killed your colleagues, with the knowledge that the universe lies open there before us. Lastly, do not forget to vote in the election. Pour encourager les autres. What's that? It's nothing, comrade. Only words. S, of course, was at my back the whole way home from the integral site. A patient comrade with well-made shoes, like all the footwear here in one state. Patiently he waits out in the street, staring upwards through a mile of glass, to lend me his reassurance. I am not alone. How could I be? Yes, comrade? A message from comrade I-330. Here are the instructions. She's unable to join you, but ask that you will follow these instructions precisely. But there's a pink slip here. Correct. I don't understand. It is explained in the instructions. Thank you, comrade. Goodbye. Comrade engineer, I must ask you to trust me. At the time stated on the pink slip, Lower your blinds as if we were together for the personal hour. I need it to be believed that I am with you then. I hope I can rely on your cooperation. Yours, I. Desire, they call it. Generalized desire. It doesn't exist. It bears no measurement, obeys no rule, conforms to no shape. And desire is in you, any body will do. Little mother, where are you? It's me. There's no one here now. Go away. There's no use your looking. There's nobody here. Go on. I don't understand. That's as may be, Mr. Engineer. Don't hang around. <laughs> Comrade O. I need an answer. Did you receive my letter? An answer? What was the question? Don't be cruel. I'm sorry. You're right about me. What you say is true. What can I say? I'm going, then. You need never see me again. Perhaps that's for the best. Can you not understand? I'm sorry? Sorry. Sorry. What use is being sorry? I, I am. I want a child. I want you to give me a child. Give me a child and then I'll go. You cannot say such things. Why not? It's true. Talk quietly. Yes, yes. What you ask is quite impossible. You know it is forbidden. You know the reproductive regulations. Every school girl Well, knows. damn the regulations. Are you mad? Quite possibly. The guardians will put you in the diving bell. Then see how rebellious you feel. I don't care. At least I will have felt the life inside me. Impossible. You're on your own tonight. Yes? That other one. The one you're mooning after. She's not like me, I bet. I bet she wouldn't ask. I can't discuss it. And I bet she wouldn't offer anything at all like this. She wouldn't simply give herself and damn the world. When I was there with R, your friend, the poet, it was you I wanted when I did it with him. Could you tell? I know it's wrong, that all I want's forbidden, but it's true. It's all for you. Just give me what I want and then I'll go away. You know you want to, comrade engineer. For old time's sake. Come on. You can be as mechanical as you like. I haven't got your pink ticket. Well, use the one that's lying on your desk. It's hers, I suppose. Well, well, yes, as a matter of fact. She stood you up. Well, let's be practical. 
Why waste an opportunity? Just go downstairs and hand it in, and I'll be here in bed when you come back. Go on now, engineer. My desiring machine. I'd meant to ask about your epic, engineer. How's it progressing? It is progressing sideways. That sounds a little avant-garde. You should be careful. I am finding my way. Art, like everything else, is governed by reason. Are you certain? Are you not? More arrests. The guardians are cleaning up before the day of unanimity. Look at them. The prisoners. No, thank you. Irrationality is catching. My God, are you thug? Release me! Release you, comrade! Are you mad? Try this! Leave him alone! Who said that? Me! Just let them go! I will take you two, then. Hold her down! I think that's comrade I. Forget it. Keep walking. I can't. No. You fool. Let go of her! Oh, you want some? Comrade I! Comrade I! <laughs> you picked the wrong person to save, comrade! My name is E190! Sorry. Sorry. My mistake. Oh, too late for that now, comrade. Ah! Wake up, comrade engineer. What is this place? Of course, you won't have seen it before. This is a cell in a guardian station. It was a misunderstanding. I thought the woman was someone else. Evidently. Can I be killed for that? Engineer D-503, when you intervened in the due process of punishment out in the square during the leisure walk today, you were clearly in no condition to act or think rationally. You are a sick man. So sick, you get your sick notes in advance. You choose your friends unwisely, and you think too much, when your entire function is to serve the spacecraft integral on behalf of one state and the benefactor. Self-consciousness, comrade, is a disease. This is what is written in the record. You may go now. Don't forget to turn out to vote. Friendly reminder, comrades. Tomorrow is a holiday. All are to assemble in the Great Square for the election. Comrade Concierge, I have a visitor. Here is the slip. A pink slip? Yes. You're sick, my dear, as anyone can see. Not normal. I tell you this from kindness. May I have the counterfoil? There is normal and there is abnormal, and you are destroying yourself. No one will tell you this, no one but me. <laughs> <laughs> you are abnormal, my boy. I alone can save you from your femme fatale. <laughs> <laughs> she could be right. But I don't care. I have this... The word sounds strange. This happiness... For now. I have it here and now, no matter what it costs. My engineer. Can you be certain? I have abandoned certainty by doing this. The laws that hold the world in place have been repealed. It's dangerous. And if the laws no longer hold, what becomes of the integral? What? The integral is my work. I shall go on with it. You think you can? I must. And is your rocket nearly ready? Almost. How can you be sure? We're going to test it naturally. I love you, Comrade High. I wish you'd tell me everything. I wish you'd lead me through the labyrinth. You're sure? Oh, yes. You'll do as I say and follow me anywhere, right to the end, if that's what it takes? Command me. Pass me that. You're leaving. It's not time. When the holiday is over and the election is complete, I promise you, you'll know everything. Why must you always go? Believe it or not, in ancient times, elections were held in which there was no way of knowing in advance who would win. It is impossible to see how anyone thought such an approach could offer any secure basis for the establishment and maintenance of a regime. Fortunately, we have come some way from those ignorant practices. Ours is a world of order, reason and structure. The benefactor is re-elected each year in a mood of joyous affirmation of strength through unity. We are one state. The history of one state does not reveal a single instance of dissent. No voice has ever spoken out against the benefactor's re-election. How could it be otherwise? I see how everybody votes, everybody sees how I vote. Together, 
we add up to the single we. Descent, I repeat, is unknown. We are one state. It seems more crowded than ever. There are still people queuing for miles to cast the vote. Rank sometimes has its advantages. A seat at the beheading, so to speak. Citizens of one state, now we rise for the benefactor. Citizens of one state, once again the day of unanimity is upon us. Once again we affirm the oneness of one state. Once again, when the trumpet sounds, I shall ask you to silently raise your hands if you decide in favor of my re-election. Let the trumpet sound. The overwhelming scale of your support is humbling, my fellow citizens. I accept your verdict. We shall celebrate. But first, sound the fanfare again, so that anyone who wishes to do so may cast a vote against. I say no! My God, what's happening? Well, something for change. Guardians, do your duty. Remove the malignants. Remove the malignants. Citizens of one state, aid your guardians. Stand up! Stand up on your hind legs! That one! Down there! Malignant in row 30, surrender. Stand up, brothers! Save me and save yourselves! He's had it. People are standing there. People are sheep. What should we do? Sit tight. It's promising material at any rate. Halt and you will not be harmed. Halt! Fire at will. Citizens of one state, be still. Maintain order. Remain seated. The benefactor has safely departed in order to mastermind the defense of one state against the malignant. Now there's something you don't see very often. Look, there's a... Down where the guardians are firing. What can we do? I see her. What a pity. I can't just leave her. Don't be a fool. There's nothing you can do. Let me pass. Let me pass. The baby inside me. Don't hurt the baby. Come on. Come with me quickly. Under the steps. Come. The city looks over its shoulder in fear and discovers itself there watching. So now I know everything. Do I? I know fear and confusion and panic, but I knew them before, albeit on a smaller scale. I know that today there, impossibly, were votes against the re-election of the benefactor, and that deaths followed and will still be following now in the white cellars among the instruments of the guardians. This too I knew before, in some sense. If I know everything, then I have always known it, unknowingly. What use is this book now? All it serves is the addiction to go on writing in it secretly at the end of time. I mean, the end of my time. For I hardly think I can survive. What are you doing here? Where's your friend O? Asleep. At home. I saw what you did. It was courageous. I missed you somehow in the crowd. But now you know. Switch on the news. It's almost time. Braves, the day so long anticipated... The day of unanimity was marked today by the re-election of the benefactor for the 48th time, unopposed. The solemn occasion was marred by a slight disturbance caused by enemies... The crisis is coming, you see. Crisis? So, what crisis? The... whatever it is, the... The revolt? The revolt is over. It was crushed, as we will be for speaking in this way. Today it was a sign. A sign that the state will crush you. It was a sign that there are unknown things. If you say so. A sign that tomorrow is unknown. It makes no sense. I will show you, comrade engineer, precisely what we have to offer. Forgive me if I don't lose any sleep. I'll leave now. Of course. So nothing's changed. My appointment for the personal hour. With whom? Don't ask. Just tell me. Your friend, the poet, R13. Not with him. Not him. Well, what am I to do? Just tell me what you want. You know where to go, comrade engineer. Good night. Not him! But what is one to do with the other? 
In one state, jealousy does not exist. How could it? Good night. We're managing just barely to keep to the schedule, Comrade Engineer. So I would hope. Despite the, um... Mm, I'm sorry, Comrade Second Engineer? Despite the disturbances during the election. Oh, which I understand was so minor as scarcely to merit the name. Anyway, we shall be ready. Let us continue undistracted. Only a week now, supposing there are no mishaps. The security is impenetrable, Comrade. Have you seen the writing on the walls? Writing? Someone's been writing on the walls of buildings all over the city and in the metro stations. No, I've seen nothing and neither should you, Comrade. I know, yes. We must get on. Have you the passenger manifest? Yes, here. Well, a great many people for a test flight, don't you think so, Comrade? We can accommodate them all and still the Integral will have room to spare. Let's not encourage them, eh? The word that is written on the wall. Comrade, please. It says Dionysus. Yes, what of it? Dionysus. I don't know what that means, do you? I've no idea, Comrade. Perhaps it means nothing. I think that's very likely. The point is to be ready. And so we are, Comrade. This is our work, the Integral Project. We will bring it successfully to completion. What else are we to do but our duty to one state? Little Mother? Little Mother, are you there? You're a fool boy, aren't you? <laughs> Very possibly. So you want to die before your time, do you, son? Of course not. What are you talking about, Mother? Then go home. I can't. Of course you can't, my son. You lost your heart a long time back. <laughs> it can't be helped. Oh, well. You know your way by now. The bedroom. My darling, if you know, you know. If not, you may be dead already. God bless you, darling. This isn't... I mean... What is it? Is it hard to make sense of, Engineer? But there are comrades here. Of course. And these others, dressed in... What is that? Animal skins. But who are they? What's, what's that smell? The noise is frightening. The opposite of music. Oh, come on, Engineer. Cheer up. They're glad to see us, can't you tell? Are you really frightened? Of course I am. You mean you're not? Out here, I feel at home. What do you mean, out here? Oh, come on, it's obvious. Are we outside the city wall? Yes. Thank God. Oh, just... Breathe it in. Here, give the engineer a drink. He's had a trying day. <laughs> oh! It, it tastes like fire. Save some for me. Oh, the, well, the music's not so bad, really. But there's too much green. And things on four legs moving. Dogs. Dogs? What kind of word is that, I ask you? Dogs? It's ridiculous. Can I have some more to drink? Are those people smoking? Let's try that. In a little while. Look, Comrie, take my hand. We have to go up these stairs in the rock. Just up here. Onto the platform, that's it. Dionysus! 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 Who is Dionysus? You are. What? And so am I, and so is everybody here. How can that be? We are lords of misrule. We are energy, we are sex. We are the fearsome, irrational powers from under the earth. And so are you now. Dionysus! Dionysus! My friends! My friends! Today, we have an honored guest. He's come to join our struggle. The day is very near when we shall storm the walls of one state. Hey! We shall rise from every manhole and cellar, unstoppable as water, voracious as fire, and we shall inherit the earth. Hey! We shall sweep away the walls, the laws, the empire of surveillance, and the narrow slavery of reason. 
we shall overthrow the benefactor and all his guardians. But ours is not the only world, my friends. There are a thousand worlds, a million worlds beyond the Earth. The benefactor and his councils know this, and they plan to carry slavery into the depths of space to make the universe again in their dead image. They are building a ship for the transport of one state ideology to Venus and Alpha Centauri. And our guest, my friends, today, he is the builder of the ship, the engineer. The engineer has all his life been a loyal citizen of one state, a good comrade like many of us here, who gave his talent and his heart to serve. And then, for him as for so many others, the crisis came. Belief deserted him. He saw that the greatest enemy of one state was the people itself, and that he was one of the people. And he has seen the light and joined our revolutionary cause. Yay! And he will help us take this ship, and in taking it, perfect the overthrow of one state. We are fortunate, are we not, to find a friend like this to serve the cause? Contra reason! Contra reason! What, what, what am I, I supposed to say? Say nothing, comrade. Smile and wave and stand there looking humble. Perfect. No, but I, I want to. I mean, I, mean, I, I should. Very well. Friends, give a hearing to our guest. Comrades, citizens, what am I to call you? Worshippers of Dionysus, dwellers beyond the wall, I am glad to meet you at last. And to add my efforts to your own, give me a drink. <gasps> That's better. What, what I would say, what, what I would say is that in the days to come, it is the duty of all, the privilege of all, the right of all, to overthrow at last the bonds of reason, to tear the statutes and the tables of figures and equations into shreds, and to go completely mad. Go mad. Go mad. Go mad. I like the sound of that. You've never mentioned the integral before. It's pretty obvious, surely. I don't know. Look, look down there under the trees. See? It's S. Impossible, darling. People like S can't imagine somewhere like this exists. How could he possibly know? It's you he wants. Now you've discovered jealousy. You're really living it to the full. Well, anyway, he's not there now. Not that he ever was. Drink up, engineer, and come with me. Citizens of furthermost space, dwellers in the light of Orion's belt, or in the cracks in the mortar that holds up the bricks in the wall at the end of the universe, I apologize. This project, which began with modest hopes of offering aid to understanding the ordinary life of a citizen of one state, has shown me descending at increasing speed into neurosis and beyond. If I had any sense, I'd have the operation. It simply does no good to think like this. There is no place for it. But I have seen the non-place. I have been outside. I have been outside the world and occupied the impossible position, the view from nowhere. The result? is sexual exhaustion, an unquenchable headache, and exponentially ramifying paranoia. In other words, my condition bears a suspicious resemblance to happiness. Two of you. Comrade Engineer, my duty is to warn this you... This female seems to have made it her mission to protect you from me, as though her sexual opinions were specially privileged, or as if you, Engineer, were a child... Does she have your permission for this? That's right, he is a child. He just can't see what it is you're... All that you've been... He can't see without my help. I'm doing my duty by him. Comrade Concierge. Yes, darling. Go away. I beg your pardon? Go. I've only done this for your benefit. Then don't. 
If that is what you wish. It is. I hope you will not live to regret it. We shall see. Goodbye. I'm sorry, she seems obsessed with me. <laughs> Apparently, she's not the only one. You know, one word from you and I'd be dead. They'd take me to the cellars and they'd put me in the bell. Trust me. I am the loyal engineer. Well, then. You know all the auditoria and conference halls are closed? When was this? Tonight, as I was coming here. All over the city, they're moving in hundreds of operating tables and boxes of equipment. Thousands of medics with guardians to watch. Setting up enough operating theatres for the whole city. Needless to say, the streets are empty otherwise. What does it mean? We don't know yet. They must suspect something. But still, perhaps we're not too late. Everyone must remember, at the given time, to do as you said. Go mad. Go mad. Makes more sense out there, outside the wall. Then we must let it in. We could just... We too. Go outside and leave all this. Give up the city. Live outside the walls. Go mad in private. A personal madness. That is no longer possible. Are you committed? <sighs> yes. Of course. Who is it? Urgent message for Comrade I. Let me in, Comrade Engineer. <laughs> What is it? Guardians are searching floor by floor. They're just downstairs. And S is with them. S? They'll be here any minute. We must go. Relax. Please go. I don't want them to catch you. <laughs> it's all so personal with you, my engineer. Please, comrade I. The old house tomorrow, engineer. To receive instructions. Goodbye. Good luck. Think. Think if I'm searched. Guardians. Open up or have it broken down. Search it all. Comrade S, you should know Comrade D, the engineer. Comrade engineer? The builder of the Integral. Of course. A figure well known to the state, of whom much is expected in the days that lie ahead. He works himself to is death. Is this true? I do my duty, Comrade S, as you do yours. Of course you do. Duty never ends. It is the condition of life. Perhaps if I knew what you're looking for. That part of manuscript. Why don't you show me that? Rather ambiguous, comrade. It isn't very good. Do you mean true? Perhaps I mean as art. Oh, ah. My epic of the ordinary life, the work I'm writing, which will ride inside the integral when it sets out for deep space. Fascinating. We must all have art. I could make you a copy, comrade. Thank you. No, that will be all. We finished here. On to the next one, comrades. We are one state. Okay. okay. Yes, okay. comrade, we are. Look at this mess. I'll clear it up. That won't be necessary, comrade concierge. You're sure? I am. Good night. Where are you going? Why have you followed me? It's dangerous. I thought that you might come to me. I meant to. It's just there's so much to be done. I don't understand. You saved me, and you saved our child, and now you just abandon us. It's difficult to explain. It's still that other one, though, isn't it? Your other whore. This is where you go to her. Please, don't shout. Oh, what does shouting matter now? They'll kill me anyway. I warned you. Coward. Go on, then. Go to your other mistress, then. At least I felt the life inside. I can take you to safety. Oh, nowhere is safe. This place is death. Then nowhere is the place to go. You're making fun of me. I'm going underground. Oh, of course it's you are. It's true. There's nothing there. There is. But what? You would be safe. You could give birth out there and keep your child. There are people who would look after you when the time comes. You could be free. Stay here like this, and when the child is born, they'll not so much as let you hold it in your arms before they take it to the creche. And then they'll take you to the bell, comrade -o. There is a chance, if you come with me now. This is her doing, isn't it? I'm sorry? She's down there, isn't she? You think I want her charity? I want to kill her, engineer, for taking you from me. I'd rather die. 
Unless you come with me. I can't. I'm sorry. It's not possible. Then there's nothing left to say. What about the child? At least the child will live. Anyway, what's it to you? Don't go. We haven't finished. Goodbye. Please. Foolish boy. All tangled up in women folk. What? What's it got to do with you? Oh, nothing, comrade. I'm sorry. Too late for that, my lad. Best be off with the old love before you begin with the new. I beg your pardon. That's what they used to say. Perhaps it's true. Now, if you're going in, go in, my son. It isn't safe to hang around out here. Are you listening? Of course. Go on. The day after tomorrow. I'm sorry. Is when you make the test flight of the Integral. Correct. Correct. That's when we take the ship. <laughs> that would be very difficult. There's no alternative. The roundups have begun. The surgical gangs are pulling in those who haven't volunteered for the operation, and our people will be killed. Our people. The dozen Dionysians already in custody. There'll be a show execution before the benefactor unless we can incite the city to revolt. If we take the Integral, the people will know what can be achieved. We use its weaponry to attack the state, assigned to everyone. Still difficult. Are you refusing? No, I'm being realistic. It's much too late for that, my engineer. I grew up believing the revolution was done, was over. There is no end of revolutions, but that's a story for another time. The integral will be loaded with dignitaries and officials and spies and bureaucrats from every ministry and secretariat, desperate for representation on the august occasion. The maiden voyage of the integral, the most powerful symbol of itself that one state has yet created, a vessel of ideological vanity, the like of which the world has never seen. We mean to take this symbol. We shall turn the integral against the state. Will you help us? Are you one of us? I am, of course. When the ship stabilizes in orbit about the Earth. Before beginning its descent through the atmosphere, the guests will be ushered into the viewing area. As engineer, your duties will be to oversee the technical performance of the integral, and also to be on hand to receive the guests when they assemble for lunch. Do your duty. After five minutes, you will be called away. When you leave the viewing area, secure the door. And that is all. We will have people inside the room. They will do what is necessary. There will be bloodshed. Eggs and omelets, engineer. That's what they tell the eggs. Beware of that imagination, comrade. Until tomorrow, then. All I need to do to set the people free is lock a door. Why hesitate? A child could do this. I can, if I wish, practice in my apartment. I have several doors, both manual and automatic. It is apt that the great cause should hinge, should depend on such a simple action. <sighs> I'm terrified. The deed is too close. My hand is itching to get out of my pocket a day from now, while my mind would like to retire from time altogether. The searches go on. There are shouts and pleadings in the corridors. Sirens in the streets below. It is as if the event is happening already without me. Can that idea comfort me? Let me repeat it to myself. How much do I want to live? An infinite amount, or just a lot? Let me measure sex against death in a rational manner. Let me sleep for a thousand years. Citizens of one state, here is an important announcement. Listen closely and follow the instructions that follow. We stand up now for the benefactor. From now on, friends and comrades, all citizens of one state will be perfect. Perfection will be compulsory for all. Science, that scalpel of reason, has at last uncovered the source of error and distraction. It is a malign growth deep in the core of the human brain, a parasitic organism with no useful purpose. 
Science has tracked the creature to its lair and now intends to kill it in every individual. The name of this affliction is imagination, a loathsome flaw in the edifice of reason since time began, but no longer. With the imagination dead, then time shall be no more. There is not a moment to waste. Idleness, distraction, dreams, and discontent can all be incinerated in an instant with the thermal probe. Hurry, now, to your nearest auditorium or medical center to receive the free compulsory operation. It is entirely painless and will leave no memory of the event. This way, freedom lies. The final obstacle surmounted so that it may be truly said, we are one state. Citizens, do not delay. May science bless you all. Have you seen them? The operation? Not really. I stood and watched one through the window of the medical centre. Kind of a display. Yeah? Half a dozen medics swarming around the patient's head. Couldn't see much. A drilling sound, a smell like burning bone. There was quite a crowd. But you know what? Hmm? No one was rushing to join in. And the guardians were there taking numbers. Early days, I dare say. Maybe, comrade engineer. Comrade you. What are you doing in my apartment? As concierge, I may enter any part of my assigned building. But what are you doing in this part? I've come to share my happiness. I'm glad to hear of it. Now, if Tomorrow you or the next day it will come. You will join the queue for the operation with all the rest, with me, and you will be saved. You will be born again. You will give up writing this diary, this dangerous stuff. That's private, comrade. That manuscript is private. Give it to me, please. Thank you. Privacy is just one of the ideas that will vanish entirely in the days to come. When I walked down the street just now, I saw my shadow cast in front of me by the sun. Tomorrow or the next day, we shall lose our shadows. We shall forget we ever possessed them. That's the idea, isn't it? The sun will shine straight through us. Oh, that silly talk again. I wouldn't let the children talk like that. The point, comrade engineer, is that when we love, we must love without mercy. You'll see... When the parasite is scorched out of your brain, you'll see how things are, how happiness is. I'll be waiting then, my engineer. I didn't think you'd come. Why not? With all the preparations. My ship is ready. Your ship? For the moment, yes. And the other preparations? The guardians are everywhere herding people to the medical centres. People are sheep. Will your plan still go ahead? Oh, yes. The odds are poor. The odds are not the point. But, comrade engineer, I will not try to force you to participate. And what would you do without the ship? We think of something else. Too late for that. There will be no one left to save, to free. Well, then? I am no revolutionary, comrade. I, my motives are perfectly selfish. I want you, and I do not wish to be saved by one state. Is that enough? That will be enough, comrade. I'll see you on the integral. You can't. It's far too dangerous. I'm afraid we may have been betrayed by comrade you, the concierge. It is entirely possible. I am naturally an invited guest from the Ministry of Culture. But if we fail, no matter. It's too late now. What choice have we? Besides, I wouldn't miss the voyage for the world. Running ignition tests. Ready for firing, engineer. Release the gantry. No accidents this time, we hope. How man to that? Five. Fire on zero. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Fire manual. Firing manual. I bet that shut the bastards up. Did you feel that? I did indeed. Oh, that's power, that. Release first stage. First stage released. Adjust for orbit. Adjusting. Time I went to see our guests. I'd like to see that view as well. I'll describe it to you. Privilege of command. We've really done it, haven't we? We have. We've won. Congratulations, engineer. We are aloft. 
Now will you write your poem? It's in my mind already. You, I see you as Phaeton. Now you've lost me. In ancient mythology, Phaeton was the child of the sun god Helios. Helios asked his son what gift he desired. Phaeton asked to drive his father's chariot team about the heavens for a day. His father frowned and warned him that this might be too much to attempt. But the proud and eager godling would not listen, and so his father reluctantly agreed to the request. When Phaeton bid his father's horses race, all went well at first, but, as I need hardly tell you, soon he found the team, the reins, the chariot, harder and harder, and then impossible to control. The horses of the sun went galloping towards the earth, nearer, nearer. Surely the earth below must be incinerated. And then? You'll have to wait and see. Comrade poet, why must you tease your friend? I might ask you the same. He likes it when I do it. I will see you later, Comrade I. Let us hope so. And thank you for your encouragement, my friend. Ah, too clever by half. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I might have your attention for a moment, Welcome to the maiden test flight of the Integral. This is an historic day when we escape the bonds of Earth. At present we are orbiting the Earth at a speed relative to the planet's own revolution. You can make out the oceans and land masses below. The moon will rise in the eastern sky as we proceed, and on our descent you will enjoy an unprecedented view of one state itself, the city, its walls, and the wilderness beyond them. Please make yourselves comfortable. The flight attendants will be happy to answer any questions. Further announcements will follow. Thank you. I must return to the bridge to oversee our re-entry. Leave that alone, Comrade Engineer. Put your hands up. Move away from the door. Comrade Second Engineer. You are under arrest. I don't understand. Guardians, make it clear to him. Let's be a in here! Come here! Ah! Open your eyes now, Comrade Engineer. Now you can see clearly once again. What is this place? This is my library, in which I like to think. You too are fond of thinking, Engineer. Not for much longer, I imagine. Do you know who the operation is for? It is for everyone. But those who really need it are few. They are the elite. The scientists, the intelligentsia, in short, people such as you. You were educated and trained by one state, housed, fed, protected from disease and malign incursions alike. You are the finest exponent currently active in your field of work. That is why it fell to you to oversee the design, the building, the testing and the flight of the Integral, the most prestigious and significant scientific engineering project in the illustrious history of one state. You alone, it was felt by those who serve among the highest councils, could be relied upon to see the matter through. And alas, Comrade Engineer D-503, we were wrong. There was a weakness in the system. You, you, one of the, I may use the phrase, high priests of reason were corrupted with the rationality. The surgical operation now being unanimously performed has not come a moment too soon. You want to destroy us. To destroy one state, is this true? You know it is. And you plan to replace it with freedom? Something like that. Freedom has a long and terrible history, my friend. I know this, if you do not. The benefactor has many roles. Lawgiver, saviour, friend and idol, guide... And tyrant. If necessary. A tyrant? Yes. I must be a philosopher king for the people of one state. A guarantee of the very earth on which the citizenry stand. Mine is the view from nowhere, comrade engineer. What do people fear most? Tell me, please. They fear the benefactor and death in the machine. No. 
What they fear most is freedom. Not everyone is the same. Not everyone. Not everyone, no. A tiny fraction of malcontents imagines its neurosis and derangement are the general case. Their time has come, they say. Indeed it has. Within a day, the integral will incinerate their forests. What remains will be a continent of ash. And where is Dionysus then? A god without a place? No god at all. Then why do people fear the operation? Why do they delay? Why must bands of guardians drag them to the medical centers? No one is complaining afterwards. Someone will always resist. Yes. Look at the screen now. Under the bell. This is your co-conspirator and mistress, Comrade I-330, is it not? Let her go. I want you to understand, engineer. Let her breathe. Continue questions. Is the engineer D-503 part of your conspiracy? I will answer no questions. The choice is yours, malignant. Extract the air. No, for God's sake, stop. You'll kill her. Ask her again. Is the engineer D-503 part of your conspiracy? I have nothing to say. Extract the air. Why must you do this? You could help, perhaps. I won't betray her. There is nothing to betray. We know everything already. All we seek is her obedience. What must I do? Speak to her. Very well. Restore the oxygen. Now, ask her. Comrade I, it's me, your engineer. They took you, then. The game is up. Cooperate. They've turned you. No, not at all. It's just... It's hopeless. Everything we dreamed is known of and destroyed. Answer their questions and the torture will stop. What would be the point of that? You'd live. I will answer no questions. <laughs> Goodbye, engineer. Please! Goodbye. Remove the air. Prolong the vacuum. Don't turn the screen off. I can't see. Use your imagination. You'll kill her. That was her choice. A kind of freedom. But what is the use of a martyr that nobody knows of? She wastes her sweetness on the desert air. An escort for the engineer, please, from my apartment now. Where, where are they taking me? You, my friend, are free to go. Take a walk in the city and see how the revolt is progressing. A stiff fight, certainly, but only one outcome is conceivable. See for yourself. The Guardians were herding the slow and the unwilling into the operation centers, aided by squads of expressionless new-made zombies. There was smoke in the air to the south. There was gunfire. Arrows fired rockets in the vicinity of the ancient house. The Tannoys alternated exhortations with threats and banal music. I was free for this time, expelled from the grip of one state to watch, as I ran between the buildings, the war of one state and Dionysus. A one day's epic shortly to be expunged from the records as cleanly as a parasite from the brain. In a station of the metro, in a washroom of the metro, I took shelter from the storm. In one cubicle, an old man raved that he had abolished infinity. In the next, I found my loyal follower S dying of bullet wounds. It was love, he said, not politics. He was one of us, he said, not one of them. It was I-330 he wanted, not me. Desire had killed him. He only pretended to be a spy. This was too much to grasp. I closed the door and washed my hands and studied my face in the washroom mirror, as if I might need to remember it. Outside my building, I watched as they dragged away my old friend, R-13. Comrades, please! I'm R the Plumber, not R the Poet. Comrades, you are mistaken! I am R the Plumber, not R the Poet! Plumber's poets, he makes no odds to us. You'll do, sonny. Get him down! We're gonna cut your brains out, comrades! I nodded as he went howling past. What, after all, could I do? I rode a mile into the sky and returned to the wreck of my apartment. You can imagine who awaited me here, patient as a judge. I am writing on the torn-up leaves of my manuscript book now, for want of occupation. 
Shots can still be heard sporadically, cries and dull explosions, but the outcome is assured. I can simply tell. It is all up with Dionysus, with Counter-Revolution and with its agent I-330, whose choking face I see in my mind's eye. And all up with me, Comrade Engineer D, whose book this is. Or was. That does not finish, but merely ends. We are one state, it appears, once more. Clearly, when I wrote those pages, and how much time I wasted doing so, I was not in my right mind. Some overstrain had unbalanced my thinking in ways I now find it impossible to understand and distasteful to revisit. I am fortunate to have been cured, fortunate in the infinite generosity of one state towards its citizens, which has fostered my rehabilitation as an electrician and general superintendent in the apartment block where I still live, though now, of course, I have moved to a shared apartment with my late life companion, Comrade Yu, the concierge, whose vigilance and common sense help to ensure that there is no danger of a relapse into the indulgence of the strange and pitiful delusions, for that is surely what they are, recorded in the foregoing pages. We are one state. In We, D-503 was played by Anton Lesser, I-330 by Joanna Riding, and R-13 by Don Warrington. U was played by Bridget Forsyth, O-90 by Julia Rounthwaite, and The Benefactor by Russell Dixon. The Tannoy was played by Emma Clark, The Second Engineer by Paul Virag, S by Patrick Bridgman, and Babushka by Judith Davis. We was written by Yevgeny Zamyatin and adapted for radio by Sean O'Brien. It was directed in Manchester by Jim Poyser. <laughs>